in which uh, I was able to get a lot of things accomplished. I've been working on a uh, Love, Peace, Harmony video, actually, to help get the word out about this uh, most incredible soul song and its ability to serve people. And today is a new day in a series. And in this series, uh, I'm going to be talking about how we can bring about the highest conditions for self-healing. I'm going to reveal a series of secrets that can assist us in a step-by-step -step manner so that we can take control for ourselves, our own health and well-being. For in reality, uh, we have to be self-responsible. There's really no one else that can do it for us. We have to be the ones that do it for ourselves, basically. And um, in taking self-responsibility and becoming informed, becoming educated, we can actually move much farther than we would ever expect. It's when we place the power outside of ourself that we start to lose um, the possibility of the highest value in our lives. So over the course of this week, I will cover a variety of wisdom topics and of course offer blessings. <clears throat> and each of them are for the purpose of assisting you and those that you care about. This includes your loved ones, your family, and your children. Because this wisdom is not meant to, to be kept uh, to yourself. It's not meant to be um, something that you hide. It's not meant to be a secret. But in fact, it has been for many, 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 many lifetimes, many, many years, many, many decades and centuries, the highest wisdoms for how we can bring the conditions to where we individually can bring the highest healing to ourself by our own thoughts, words, and actions. That kind of information has been hidden. And it's time to awaken to the different ways in which we inhibit our physical, our emotional, our mental, and our spiritual bodies from having the highest and the best of everything for us. So that gives you an idea of some of the value of what you can expect here uh, on this new series on what we can do for self-healing. <coughs> I changed positions today. I'm in my living room. I can't really tell if the quality is good. You have to let me know if you can hear me and see me well. It appears to be okay. And I'm going to stop, pause for a moment and acknowledge all those that are joining. <coughs> so welcome to Rishav. Welcome to Kristen Rojas. Welcome also to Tammy Hunter. Welcome Susan Duvin Dorden. Welcome Sharon Dodd. Welcome Lisa Bradley. Uh, welcome to all those that are listening in the podcast. Welcome to Susan Birchmore. Welcome Janet Vigil. And also welcome Dana Knapp. Welcome Robin Toth. Welcome Stan Dabian. Welcome Kathleen Monahan. Aloha Pat. Welcome Kristen Strachan. So I'm not hearing any complaints, so I'm guessing you can hear me well. I'm guessing <coughs> that that part's working good. So this last um, two weeks, actually, we focused on the seven chakras and the Y Jiao. Now, because I do the live streams four days a week, that's eight subject matters over those two-week period. And there's a great deal of uh, positive feedback a lot of interest from the groups. It seems that the, the concept of chakras is intriguing to people. They would like to know or understand more about it. So if you have not had a chance or if you're just tuning in and you missed those, above my video is a link to the archives. <clears throat> you can also go to my website and I have everything on podcast now. Actually this week I'm loading the podcasts in for last week. so. This week, there's going to be chakra four, five, six, and seven, and uh, the Y Jiao. 
But uh, you can, of course, go to my previous Facebook uh, archives, go to my Facebook page and scroll down, see them that way, or you can uh, go to the podcast and register, and then you can bring that into your system. Now, the way, I do recommend catching up to that because it is actually one of the ways that you can self-heal. So we also have a few more people jumping in here. So welcome to uh, Tony Tay. Welcome to Candy Cornette. Thank you all for coming, and thank you also for hitting the share button to let other people know about this live stream. I'm going to see if I can make my chair go any higher because the camera on my computer is pretty high. That's about as high as I can get it, so I'll try to sit up just a little bit more so I'm not always looking up. In any case, welcome to everybody. Let us go ahead and connect. Placing our hands in soul light, soul service, hand position, which is like a prayer position, but we drop the left hand in front of the heart center. The right hand gently remains pointed upwards towards heaven. <coughs> and Aloha Annie Smith, welcome. So for those that are new for the first time listening or watching, this is a blessing. This is a opportunity to receive a blessing at this time. So make your request for everybody else. Let us offer our service. We will invite in the beings of light. Dear all the beings of light serving the planet of the light side, beloved Mother Earth, beloved Father Heaven, all angels, healing angels, archangels, masters and ascended masters, gurus, lamas, sifus, saints, buddhas, bodhisattvas, all beings of light, known and unknown, we love you all, honor you all, respect you all. We ask you to please be present at this time. We ask you to serve in whatever way is most appropriate to each of those that are watching, each of those that are listening, to assist us to more further align to our highest health and well-being. Please uh, uh, assist each and every one of us to comprehend and apply the wisdom that we have learned each and every time we come to these live streams because it is the application of the wisdom that creates the results. We invite the source soul song of love, peace, and harmony transmitted to all souls and all universes to please turn on. And we invite all souls and all universes to chant with us. So let us chant love, peace, and harmony. You can make a request for those who wish to join in. Please join in. Everybody else, prepare to receive. Lula, lula, li. Lula, lula. La la li, lu la lu, la li lu la, lu la ha li lu la, lu la ha li lu la. Wo ai wo xian he ling, wo ai chun ren li. Wang Li Hing Rong, Her Mu Shur Shong, Shong Ai Ping on her She, Shong Ai Ping on her She. I love my heart and soul, I love all humanity. Join hearts and souls together, love, peace, and harmony. Love, peace, and harmony. <coughs> Excuse me. How, how, how? Thank you, thank you, thank you. So this week, uh, my teacher, Master Shah, is doing a month-long uh, series of events in the area or country of Belgium. And invariably, I'm going through some physical purification. My purification organ is my lungs. And in the last few days, they've become a little more restricted than I am new, used to. So it's very clear to me that I need to do some more purification with this organ. So I'm very grateful for the wisdom, very grateful for the opportunity. So thank you and welcome to everybody who has joined us. Welcome Ali to Sally Francis. Welcome Ali and welcome Sally and welcome everybody else. If I have not mentioned your name, great to have you here. Thank you for joining. 
And also thank you for sharing. Um, today is the beginning of a series on what we can do to self-heal. Now, prior to uh, uh, going into anything, I briefly mentioned, and I will mention again, that a lot of what will be shared may be the first time you hear it. It may be hearing it again, but going deeper into the wisdom. And it may be something where uh, you get a great aha moment about something that you never truly understood until the wisdom has been shared today. A lot of the wisdom that I will share over the course of this week <coughs> has its roots in traditional Chinese medicine, but the greater aspect of the roots are in the wisdom of the ages, the ancient, 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 ancient wisdom. And I'm going to start by offering information that will be very new to a lot of people um, to give you a much larger picture of, at least from what I've come to understand, both from my own understanding and from my teacher, about the larger nature of our health and well-being and where, where and how we fit with all of this uh, stuff we call life. Because there is a microcosm and a macrocosm. Micro meaning smallest, macro meaning largest. It has been said that <coughs> as above, so below. And as below, so above. What does that mean? Each uh, day that goes by, each year that goes by, I become a little bit wiser, a little bit more aware. I give a lot of credit to my teacher, Master Shah. He has brought great, great uh, and wisdom that has validated itself out. You know, you do the practice and it works what he teaches. So then you move from questioning it to, to wow, this is the real deal. And I've went through this nine years of processing with, with my teacher, Master Shah. And one of the things that I failed to understand at the beginning of my journey was the interconnectedness of you and I, the interconnectedness of uh, me with all the souls inside my body, meaning the souls of my, my organs, my systems, everything there, and uh, interconnection with the, the part of us that is much, much, much larger than you and I. I felt uh, I have not really understood to the level I would like the nature of time and space and how it's relative to us and our health and well-being but I'm getting closer to it. And I'm going to share some thoughts with you today to both make you think and to set the stage for self-healing. Because the truth is, I cannot heal you. Only you can heal you. I did not cause your suffering or whatever blockage you're dealing with. So it stands to reason that I cannot heal you as well. And that's the case for, for everything out there. There's truly no healers as much as there are deliverers of those things that can assist the other person to bring healing to themselves. Even uh, our beloved doctors, they don't heal us. They deliver things to us that help our body to mend itself or sustain a position that at least allows us to enjoy life a little bit more. So I tell you this so that you can start on the right foot, which is responsibility. Responsibility is key if you are to begin this process of wherever you're at that you're uh, enjoying, how to maintain it, and to go where you'd like to be. And it starts with responsibility. There are many layers of responsibility. The first layer is responsibility to self. And there are a tremendous amount of, of issues, health-related issues, that, that originate just from that separation right there. But you're to be responsible to self. It's, um, it's an area that if given attention to, can resolve up to half of your problems. Because when we recognize that our thoughts, our words, and our actions towards self have a direct impact on our physical health, on our emotional health, mental health, we can start to make change. 
most of us from our moment of birth up till now are not given an educational pathway, a spiritual pathway, a, uh, a mentor pathway that works with honoring of self. Some of us have had very good parenting and they have taught us that. And so if you are one of those blessed ones, then make sure you offer your deepest gratitude to your parents all the time. And do your best to repeat that to your children. Uh, because we are the vessels through which those younger than us learn. So they'll either learn and don't do those things that we have done, or they will make better choices based on what they observe from us. In either case, responsibility is one of the keys for uh, self-healing. And if we go backwards a little bit and we start bringing in some larger concepts, bringing it back to us individually, we can start to see the micro and the macro. A great deal of us that will be watching and listening to this um, tend to be very, very focused on our own stuff. The bills, the headache, the back pain, the screaming kids, you name it, and you can probably rattle off 20 more right off the top of your head. And that's because that's where our focus has to be, so to speak, to go through the day. We can't, quote, change that, right? But herein comes the wisdom on the microcosm and the macrocosm. Because if we can start to see a much bigger picture, and we start working with the responsibility of that bigger picture and see how it applies to us, where we're very focused on our little small picture, then we can make a much bigger impact for the long haul. Because if we're just focused on this small picture in front of us every day, every day, every day, every day, and we don't have any grasp on a little bit bigger version of it, we will just have more of what we're not wanting day in and day out. And I don't think that's what everybody wants. I believe they would want to increase their awareness and increase their uh, consciousness and accordingly increase their well, well-being, health and well-being. So I'm going to offer just a few minutes on the, the bigger aspects and then tie it back into where we're starting at, which is self, since this is self-healing and self-responsibility. So some of this, I will, and I will tell you what, is uh, stuff that I have ascertained or gathered over time. Certainly you don't have to accept it. You certainly don't have to believe it. No one's asking you to do that with anything that comes out of my mouth. Um, but if it resonates with you, write it down. Keep it. It may have value for you. And then there will be certain things that are direct Master Shah teachings and I'll make sure you know what those are. <clears throat> so I've come to understand uh, as I have went through this thing we call life that we are very, very much connected and that what has happened hundreds of years ago could be impacting us today and what we do now could impact those of us in our ancestral line a hundred years from now so we are connected ancestrally speaking and it's important for us to comprehend that it has to do with the nature of our creator we are all one originally keep that in mind and our soul lives forever. You've heard this many times before. We do not. So our soul has a litany of experiences for most of us several hundred lifetimes and, and potentially for some of us a thousand or more lifetimes. And so that's quite a range of experiences. And in this thing that we call time and space there is what we know as past, present, and future. But there is also what is called the now. And the now is where we have our focus. And there's a great deal of teachings that say, stay in the now, focus on the now. I have zero disagreement with that. I think there's a great value in it. When you're in the now, is your focus positive or is it negative? So staying in the now is only as valuable as your state of mind. Your state of mind is predicated upon what happened before you got to this moment. 
and now this moment, and in the next moment. So in order to be in the now, in the highest possible place, we have to give some perspective to the past. And we need to give some attention to the future. We can do that all in the now moment, but we can't ignore either, because they're having an impact on our present moment. Make sense so far? Good. So in recognizing what we're doing now impacts things, we think it impacts our future. It's true, but I've come to understand that it also impacts what we call the past. Now that one took me a while to grasp. I'd heard it many times before, and it's taken me about 10 years actually to grasp that it's true. In Master Shah's teachings, I've, I've, I have uh, heard many readings when people have received blessings, and the readings referred to things that happened and changed from the past. So let me offer you an example. When you have received a blessing through one of Master Shah's books by Tracy and Calligraphy, through watching me on live stream when I offer a three or five minute complimentary blessing, when you receive a healer transmission, excuse me, a, a transmission that offered blessings, when you noticed where that um, suffering went from a, a seven down to a two or completely disappeared, what happened? It was offered to you in the now. What brought you this now moment? Was it something from the future? No. It was something from you and your ancestral past. And yet, when the blessing was offered now, it removed something from the ancestral past. Are you staying with me? So the past and the present and the now, the past, present, and future are all intertwined your current now and your self-responsibility to move towards self-healing begins with the recognition of the interconnectivity of it all. And as you work with this recognition, you can start to uh, dissolve those things that are, are no longer true for you. Part of self-healing is separating yourself from truth and false information. What could have been true when you were five years old, you've been carrying forth and now you're 28, and it's no longer true, but you still carry it forth. Maybe a message of I'm ugly, or a message of I'm not good enough, or whatever it is. Okay? It may have been something you accepted at that point in time, but you let it stick with you. And so all of the things that Master Shah teaches is about unwinding the past and manifesting a very positive future from this point of now. This is where self-healing begins. This is where we have the greatest opportunity to change both because without that conscious and constant awareness, we truly are just wallowing in our own mud and wondering why we're in a place of depression or anxiety or whatever emotion you want to label it with. These things come to us and they're in our world because of wrong thoughts, words, or actions at some point in our soul's existence. And present and conscious responsibility is what can change that. The masters of, of all uh, teachings will teach that when you are sitting outside looking at it from the, an outsider's perspective, you have the, the, much, the highest possibility to move through it as quickly as possible. Now, easy to say, not so easy to do. Not so easy to do when you're in the middle of a car accident. Not so easy to do when the children's throwing up while you're trying to feed the second child. Not so easy to do when you, know, you have pain in your back all day and you've got to cook dinner for the husband and, and one of the kids is screaming upstairs that the other kid is you know, poking him. I understand that life is constant and present to us in that way. 
the master's perspective might be, I will be the observer on the threshold. I will be the person that watches the person. I will strive each and every moment to be the person that watches me. I will strive in each and every moment to see my thoughts, words, actions, and reactions so that I don't bring myself more of what I'm not wanting so that I start the shift through conscious awareness. To be the dweller on the threshold, to be the one that watches yourself, takes conscious practice. It takes you knocking yourself out of your place of um, comfortability, so to speak. Now, if you're moved along very advanced in your path and you're able to... Uh, Life comes at you hard and heavy, and you're able to just, ah, no big deal, ah, no big deal. Congratulations, you're doing very well. I'm not there yet, I'm getting closer, but one of the things that's allowed me to get closer is the wisdom that I'm sharing with you at this time. The dweller on the threshold, the one that watches themselves, watches their thoughts. They take responsibility. So if you are in the kitchen and your back is sore and you're trying to cook and the kids are screaming and the television's up too loud and all of these things are going on, you have a choice. You can be in it and in that stress of the moment or you can step out of it and look at it all with a smile on your face and go, wow, this is interesting. What's the best way to react or to be in this moment? I have children, they love each other. Yeah, they're fighting, but they love each other. I have a blessed husband that has helped me and helped our family to put a roof over our heads. I have food in the fridge that I can make this meal with. And I've been given an opportunity to ask forgiveness for whatever suffering I may have brought upon others that showed up in the form of a back pain. This is a perspective you may or may not agree with, but what it allows you to do is to change your thinking in that moment, whatever it may be. Maybe it's a good one, no need to change it. When you practice being the person that watches yourself, you can control the automatic responses that are built in from early childhood. You can control the uh, false teachings. Some of you grew up Catholic. Some of you that are watching grew up uh, Christian. Some grew up Islam. Some grew up uh, Buddhist. We all have our different uh, growing up principles, teachings, and uh, dogmas. And some of those have served us very, very well. Some of them have brought irritation because it, it butts up in the, a face of what you recognize now is not really true. And so is there a value in acting out on those things that are no longer true? You can apply that to teachings of uh, boys don't cry. You know, that's not true, but it's been taught many times before. You've heard it in the movies. You've maybe even seen uh, a man in your life say that to another uh, being. And we have to become conscious of our we have to be responsible, really. We have to be responsible more and more and more because it is the it is the ignorance of the lack of responsibility. It is the, um, the willingness to stay in that place where we're just stuck that is really maintaining the pain. Whatever you're experiencing the pain on, be it emotional, mind pain, 
financial, doesn't really matter. Um, that pain will continue until it doesn't. Who's going to stop it? You think, you think Santa Claus is going to show up and stop it? Not going to happen, guys. You have to be self-responsible for whatever the pain is, wherever it shows up from. And it begins by recognizing the connectivity of time and space, the connectivity of all of our previous time, the future, and where we're at in this moment, and what chances we have in this moment to impact not only this moment, but the one after that, and the one an hour later when we're driving, and the one two hours later when we're, uh, when we're watching you know, the mother smack her child, and that's not something we would do. And, and four hours later when the husband comes home, and maybe he's a little drunk, and uh, it brings up all that other stuff for you. Each one of these things that happen in our life, and we, there's a billion of them, can all be viewed with a different set of eyes. They can be viewed through eyes of compassion, and we can gauge and choose our response. Because it will absolutely impact our future, won't it? It absolutely will. And sometimes, I would say at least 50% of the time, <laughs> maybe more, our um, responses, our reactions, are um, expanded. They're, ex they're, 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 they're double or triple expanded of what would normally be the, the response. And there's a reason why. Because we have not honored ourselves. Stay with me on this one. So the husband does something in this example. The kids do something, right? And it's definitely not the first time. Maybe it's the 32nd time. And because it's the 32nd time, it's also your 32nd response. The first 31st didn't work. And each one that didn't bring the results you wanted was stacked upon the next. And each one that is stacked upon the next ramps up your irritation, your emotional response, your fed upness, whatever it might be. Well, the dweller on the threshold would look at that and go, here I am responding again the same way. I am supposed to take self-responsibility for my past, my present, and my future. And I have to do it here and now. These sets of responses have not worked for me. What is the best way to be loving to myself and to not create more of what I'm not wanting? Now that requires a little contemplation. It requires you to step out of the knee-jerk response. It requires you to not waste your time doing something that hasn't worked. And so you step out of that moment and you go, okay, well, I could do this, I could do this, I could respond this way, I could respond that way, I did that, that didn't work. You go through those processes. But my encouragement is to move to a higher one. And that higher one is loving yourself in that moment because what's happening is you are being triggered by something outside of you that's affecting you and your job is to maintain so that you can go to the next moment without going insane whatever it might be but you have to love yourself and whatever that was that triggered you has created a feeling and has created an emotion it may have created a, excuse me, a feeling, which is an emotion, has created a need. So let's play with it, for example. If it was one of the kids acting out, a feeling of, oh no, once again, it's not really a feeling, a feeling of um, anxiety, potentially, depending on what it is, a feeling of frustration, okay, a feeling of um, concern, uh, a feeling of hopelessness, there's many, many possible feelings. Most of us have an extremely limited vocabulary. So my first encouragement, and I hope you write this down, is to 
educate yourself with 30 emotions. Just make it a goal. I'm going to find 30 emotional words, and I'm going to keep them in my wallet, I'm going to keep them in my purse, and I'm going to pull it out when it's time for me to take care of me. I'm going to just define, because there's more emotions than 30, trust me, most of us have five or six at the tip of our tongue. And you're going to define what emotion is going on when you would have went off on the kids, when you would have been uh, went into your quiet, sunken place because you know yelling at the husband's not going to work, and so you withdraw for who knows how many days. That's not going to work either, but that's the pattern that works best for you for protectiveness. And what's really happening underneath all that is you did not express your feelings, and you did not express your needs. Maybe you tried at the beginning of the relationship with the child or the marriage or whatever it might be, financial problem, doesn't matter. Because it all boils back to the same thing. It doesn't matter the source of the pain. You are trying to heal yourself. And you can start by healing yourself, by loving yourself. You can start to love yourself by finding what it is you're feeling and what it is you're needing. Maybe nobody else cares, but if you honor yourself, you will feel better. That I can absolutely 100% guarantee you. And when you feel better, you can make a better choice that allows for a much better future and starts unwinding the past. I'll go back and repeat that in a minute. But I want to stay with, for now, the feeling in need. So by identifying the feeling. I'm feeling depressed. Go a little bit deeper. Why? Because depression usually has some anger associated with it. Well, actually, I'm feeling, and you might have to reach for it, I'm feeling angry because I'm actually angry with myself. You know, I'm angry with myself because I let this go on and on and on, and any number of things could come up. Great. Restricting to the root of things. What are you needing? I'm needing validation. I'm needing someone to care for me. I'm needing to be appreciated. Your next assignment, find 30 needs. These are, I think, the adjectives. I've never been a, anyone that's very strong with uh, understanding verbs and nouns and all that stuff. I have a pretty good English vocabulary, but telling you what they are, plurals, verbs, synonyms, all that stuff, you got me. Anyway. 30 needs. What need is being met? Or what need is not being met? By taking the time to not go into an automatic knee-jerk place, which brings you more of what you're not wanting, and stepping away from it, identifying what you're really feeling, could be two or three feelings, and what you're really needing, what in essence you're doing is you're loving yourself. You're allowing yourself for the first time to be heard and understood, even if it's by yourself. To have the expectation that those outside of you can give this to you will take quite a bit more time. But at least you can start honoring yourself. And by honoring yourself, you will be beyond shocked at the value that it brings to you. It will literally bring to you uh, like a deep breath of relief, almost like you came up for air for the first time in a long time. You'll be able to see the conditions around you from a higher perspective. You almost have a little smirk on your face. You'll be able to come at whatever it is with more strength, and more gratitude in most cases. Now, it's not something that let's, it's a do it once and forget about it. This, at least in terms of the human being, in terms of the human um, experience, a great deal of human beings have a great deal of problems in this world because of communication. There is over 7,000 languages, and nobody's figured out that people hear, receive things differently, 
then people speak it. And nobody's figured it out. I say this to you, I guarantee you that all of you are hearing it completely differently than the next person. And that's okay. You're receiving it through your filters, the filters that you've been taught over the course of time. He must mean this because that's what, that's what you've been taught that it, that it probably means. Another person's receiving it completely differently. This is the nature of the human being. We all speak out differently and receive differently than the person next to us. This is why it is imperative, imperative, to have a vocabulary of feelings and needs. Because if you look back on your whole life, it's highly reasonable and probable that you have not had the opportunity to express your feelings in a healthy way, in a loving way, in a way that's nurturing and supportive. And you have not been able to express your needs without them being cut off. I can't think of a single person that I've ever come across that hasn't had that scenario. And so what we do, because we haven't been able to uh, express ourselves in a safe way, in a safe place, we find workarounds. The workarounds bring us problems, stress, and wrong solutions, and they cause us to act out and react out in ways that bring us more suffering, more of what we're not wanting. All from not loving our self by validating our self of whatever it is we're feeling and needing. We expect those outside of us and nearby us. We try, but I'm feeling this, I'm needing this. Try doing that to, to, to a significant other. In most cases, they don't have a vocabulary to work with you. They'll take it personally and you go nowhere with it. So we must take care of our self. I started by talking about the bigger picture. How do we go about bringing healings to ourselves? We start by recognizing that virtually every problem that has shown up in our life, it truly doesn't matter if it's a problem with relationship, if it's a problem with finances, if it's a problem with health, it matters not what that quote problem is that has shown up in front of us. If it's with us, if it's in our world, either in this time or in a previous lifetime, we have done a wrong thought, a wrong word, or a wrong action, or our ancestors have. Now, I know it sounds really simple, and I know you've heard it before, but I'm hoping that you'll grasp it at a deeper level. Because this method that I'm suggesting to you is literally the fastest way to unwind it. Because those wrong thoughts, words, and actions back here are bringing this present moment. And more of what, you're, what hasn't been working is not going to bring you anything different than what you've been getting back here. So that's where the recognition comes in. Of course we apply love. Of course we apply forgiveness. But it all starts with self. Because once we, quote, repair ourself, we're not broken, but we're also not fully loving of self. We are not fully honoring of self. We have forsaken aspects of our own health and well-being and, and state of mind to be present and available to others in a less than, than its highest potential because we're trying to make everybody happy. Why do we try to make everybody happy? Because then they'll love us and I won't have stress. But that's, in my observation, not the right way to do things. When we take time, as a, as a personal agreement, as a, as a, uh, as a, uh, you know how at the beginning of the new year, they're like, New Year's resolution, okay? This is so much more than that. This is like the, uh, the beginning of what changes everything. We have to start loving ourselves first. It, and it begins with awareness of each moment, how it shows up in your world. You literally, if you could, if it was possible, you literally pull yourself out of it like an out-of-body experience and, and look at it from the observer's perspective. Okay. I can feel myself going down this patternistic road. I don't want to go there. What can I do about this? What am I feeling? What am I needing? And how do I love myself? And how can I better respond 
so that I don't create more of what I'm not wanting. That's a reproducible thing. It just requires consciousness. Foresight, I guess is a good word. It requires some foresight. It becomes a lot easier when, you know, after you do it, I'd probably take, you know, 30, 40, 50 times, but pretty soon it becomes like, you know, when you drive the car and you know not to turn left at that gas station because that, you know, that something's always there or the traffic jam is always there. So you, you go out of your way a little bit and take a right, but you always get to your point, point B a lot faster. It's a learned process. You learn how to avoid the blockages. Uh, we have learned how to avoid the blockages in our life by trying to minimize the pain as much as possible because we weren't armed with simple self-love, self-help techniques such as honoring self, honoring feelings, honoring your needs. Now eventually if you can find someone, uh, a guy friend, a girlfriend, a best friend, significant other, that is able to listen to you, great. But truly, the responsibility falls in your lap. So I've been talking for a while, just following flow as to the direction of this uh, series on how to self-heal. <clears throat> and I want to hear what some of your thoughts are. I want to hear um, where you see some roadblocks. And... and so give me, you know, this is, this is uh, a roadblock that I'm having in my life right now. Um, and then what I'll do is I'll, I'll offer perspective because maybe it's hard for you to, to see it. Maybe you're so deep in it, in the forest, you can't see how to apply this wisdom directly to your condition. So list a couple of those and then I'll give you examples about how this would work. Okay? <clears throat> now there is... And I've mentioned this before, you can write this down. Center for Nonviolent Communication. Center for Nonviolent Communication. CNVC.org. And this, um, this entity, it's, a, it's, a, it's an amazing entity. They teach feelings and needs, they teach effective communication. And I recommend it to everybody that's willing to listen. But more importantly, it's a, uh, it's a life set, a life skill. I was talking to a student this morning, and uh, they, they had a scenario where they were not able to uh, they were not able to deal with the spouse's emotions and they were very empathic and so it was doubly burdensome to them because the spouse didn't have to speak and they could feel it. <clears throat> and so it makes it, you know, very difficult. And so I offered her, you know, some of this similar wisdom and she was very surprised uh, about the power in it. And one of the things I explained to her is we as parents, we as adults, have a much bigger responsibility. And that is that we need to recognize that our, our loved ones watch us all the time. So the way we react, the way we respond, the compassion that we bring to the table, the, um, every time we respond in a healthy way, our children watch that. Our children see that. And we are creating a future built with love, peace, and harmony. Effective and loving communication. So this is so much more than just a, a cute teaching or an enlightening teaching. It's a pathway to self-healing. So um, I'm, I'm looking for, see if I see any uh, requests here. <coughs> Okay, so Susan says, one of my roadblocks is with my beloved sister, Jocelyn, who suffered from three massive strokes and brain bleeds and has a really hard life. She fills with su she's filled with such hatred and anger over how my life has turned out and so different from hers. I love her with all my soul 
I will be seeing her in a month and don't know what to say to her. Thank you. Okay. So let's use this as an example. So what I would do, Susan, is I would become a little more educated in a vocabulary of feelings and needs. And when your sister is sharing, I would simply, uh, and I'll go to how you can deal with yourself in a minute. When you're dealing with your sister, um, yes, when she says something that's flippant, something that's hard, something that's hurtful, underneath that, she has something she has, does not have the words for. So you have to guess. What is it that my sister might be feeling? Well, I'm definitely feeling anger from her. I'm feeling resentment from her. Okay. And what is she needing? Okay. I'm guessing that she's needing, and you go through, the, through your list of possible needs, right? Maybe she's needing, uh, maybe she's angry with God. Maybe she's uh, uh, feeling like she's more deserving of what she's received. She's definitely not taking responsibility, but you can't say that to her yet. And so, but if you give her um, assistance, like, wow, sister, it sounds like you're really feeling, and you give her two or three possible choices. And I'm guessing that you're needing, and you give her two or three choices. And you stop. And she'll rant on for a little while more. And you just listen. <clears throat> and listen to what she's saying. And you discern further. What is she feeling and what is she needing? Because what happens is, the first time she releases, she's still about five layers from getting to the core of it. And so each time you listen, offer her a possible set of feelings and a possible set of needs, she'll tell you. She'll say, no, that's not it. And then she'll go a layer deeper. And because you're helping her to, to weed out what she's unable to verbalize. And as you assist her to go deeper and deeper, she will get calmer and calmer. She will, be, um, she will probably start crying because for the first time and who knows how long, she's been able to get some emotion off her chest and expressed in a healthy manner. Um, then you guys can move into forgiveness and things of that nature. People in general, because they don't have ourselves included, this whole thing's about self-healing, right? But because we don't have the ability to honor our self, to honor our feelings and our own needs, <coughs> we have, uh, we allow ourselves to get beaten down. And uh, the, our loved ones are no different, okay? We've, we've, we've came into a society where these kinds of healthy communications simply aren't nurtured, they're not honored, they're not respected, they're not supported. And this is why we have to be self-responsible. But in doing so, what you'll discover uh, is a great deal of um, love and a great deal of forgiveness for self and for others. You'll be able to understand more deeply whatever they're going through. They'll be able to understand more deeply <clears throat> and oftentimes we have stuff on our chest that we want to say to them as well. They're, it's impossible for them to hear it. They're in too much pain, whatever their world is in. So if we are the big ones with the big shoulders and we self-placate, we do our own self-talk, uh, how you know, honoring ourselves, our own feelings, our own needs, and then once they come off their stuff, they can then be there for us. They might not be able to fully hear what's going on for us. Remember, they don't have a vocabulary, but at least they might not be defensive anymore. They might not be reactive anymore. They might actually say, I'm sorry. They don't truly understand it, but if you truly take the suggested wisdom of the uh, nonviolent communication <coughs> uh, and truly make it a, a choice to love yourself enough to discover your feelings and needs and find a way to make that a communication benefit for yourself, you are on the beginning of the path of self-healing at the largest possible levels. And I mean that uh, because it's our soul that goes from lifetime to lifetime to lifetime. But we're here living out the, the, uh, the choices that had been made before we, our personality, got here. Okay, So we're dealing with all the stuff that we don't remember that happened before we got here. But it's showing up in our life, 
health problems, relationship problems, financial problems, whatever it might be problems, okay? They're right in front of us. By doing this, we allow ourselves to step outside of it. By doing this, we allow ourselves to bring a whole new mindset to the table. How do you maintain a positive mindset <coughs> when you're always putting out fires? <coughs> How do you maintain a, a, a manifestation of a positive future when you're always dealing with knee-jerk responses? Not easy to do. So in order to unwind the past and create the positive future, it starts by being present. It starts by making choices that bring the highest and best result for our future and naturally unwind the past. Everything Master Shah teaches is about love and forgiveness, love and forgiveness, love and forgiveness. Why? It unwinds the past and makes for potentially great, better future. But if we don't get present to ourself, I forgive myself. Okay, that didn't work. Why? We didn't change any of the patterns. The patterns show up because we have been uh, ignorant, so to speak, of them. The conscious awareness allows us to not be ignorant of them. Okay. Sally Francis responds. Uh, let's see, I'll go to you in a moment, Sally. Lizette was first. <clears throat> Lizette says, one roadblock for me is that I attracted a man who won't commit. I want to attract the best version of me. Is it I'm not ready? Okay, so that, let me see how to answer that correctly. So you would go check in with yourself, Lizette. What is it that you're feeling? What is it that you're needing? I'm feeling um, potentially, I'm feeling unworthy. I'm guessing. I don't know. I'm just throwing this out there. Unworthy, unloved, um, feeling, uh, did I make the wrong choice? Feeling lonely, feeling uh, desperate, feeling hopeless, feeling uh, worried, concerned about the future. Um, what am I needing? I'm needing, um, I'm needing support. I'm needing to be confident in my future. I'm needing a sense of security. I'm needing um, nurturing. I'm needing to, to be validated for the love that I put out that it feel that it's, it's equal. So these are examples. Did any of those feel good to you? Were well, you nodding your head going, yeah, 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 that's what I'm feeling. Yeah, that's what I'm needing. All I did was guess based on some common sense obvious things. And if you were nodding your head the majority of the time, Lizette, <clears throat> then this, now how does it feel? Do you feel a bit more validated? Do you feel a bit relieved, like some, uh, like some air has come out of your balloon a bit? Where you're not so, you know, concerned and worried? It's a natural result of having our feelings and needs validated. We have to self-validate them. When we self-validate them, we can start to make better choices. So your automatic response was, is it me? Did I do something wrong? Am I not ready? Is it, am I putting out this energy that's creating this scenario? Well, I kind of doubt it. Uh, it. It potentially has some karmic implications in which uh, you potentially maybe were not committing to others in past lifetimes where you were holding out. Maybe your heart was closed. I don't know. But from the karma perspective, uh, that's a second avenue that you would add to something like this. The first part is, is loving yourself, not beating up on yourself, honoring yourself, identifying your feelings and needs. The karmic aspect is very simple. No matter what it is, if, if you keep losing your jobs, then that's the karma. You cause others to lose their jobs. If you keep attracting people that don't commit, then that's your karma. You, uh, in previous lifetimes, uh, kept, kept bringing people into your life that maybe loved you, and you were not committing to them, meaning your heart was not open in those lifetimes. And so that's where you do your forgiveness practices. That's where you do your, your rebalancing of the spiritual debts. Okay, So this is... You know, two two sides to it, but 
How do you get to that side? If you just do the one, you're not completely releasing it. The other one allows you to open up. So hopefully that assists you. <clears throat> Sally Francis, I'm highly empathic and pick up everyone's energy. My brother Roger's words are always abusive. And he told me you have not told me you have not died yet. He's always so angry. He always wants me to wipe me out and has left me out of my father's estate. How do I respond to that? Okay. <clears throat> so self-love starts with what am I feeling? What am I needing? Okay, so reach for the feeling, Sally. I'm feeling dejected, unloved, um, misunderstood, um, confused, confused as to why my brother might be thinking these ways, um, angry. Uh, what else? Upset, um, frustrated hurt very hurt okay there's probably quite a few more that you can find but how does it feel to have those those feelings validated I imagine pretty good what am I needing I'm needing my brother's love I'm needing to be understood that I don't remember doing anything harmful or hurtful that would cause him to react out in this way I'm needing um, an opportunity to speak I'm needing the opportunity to be heard I'm needing to be validated I'm needing uh, to, to have a, a loving relationship again with my brother and my family. Uh, I'm needing to feel like I didn't do anything wrong when I can't remember doing anything wrong. And so those are probably not the best words that re represent needs. They're more sentences in some cases, but they're probably also moving towards a layer of accuracy. So this helps you to not feel like you've done something wrong. You start to loving yourself now. It's helping you to recognize um, that there probably is some deeper things going on here, definitely some karmic things going on. But when you take the time to move into those feelings and needs, you can love yourself. Give yourself compassion. That's another thing you're needing. You're needing compassion. You're needing respect. Um, and so you need to give yourself those things through the acknowledgement, not beat yourself up, not minimize yourself, put yourself down. Then you look at the karmic aspects, okay? It's very straightforward. At some lifetime, you maybe cut your brother out of the will. In some lifetime, maybe uh, uh, there's some treason going on there, okay? It could have been a very treasonous series of events in previous times that you don't remember. Identify exactly the things that are happening that you feel as a result of, of his thoughts, words, and actions towards you. I'm feeling this, I'm feeling this, I'm feeling this, I'm feeling this. That's what you do your forgiveness practices for with his soul, not to him in person, with his soul. On to the family, because it probably runs through the ancestral chain. So you're doing your part in resolving the karmic implications in this life. If you do your part, whether it works out in this life and that you get uh, you get put back in the will or not, that's that's you know that's up to the karma part of it. Maybe it has to work out that way because it could be in a previous time you cut everybody out and kept all the riches. I don't know, but maybe it didn't. Maybe it has something entirely different root, a root in let's say treason or failed love or something like that. Okay, but in either case, whatever harm and suffering you feel. You ask for forgiveness for causing those same things upon those others that are browbeating you, so to speak. Okay? All right. <clears throat> uh, you're welcome, Susan. Hopefully that, that assists you. Okay, so Cheryl Henry says, this is the last one I can work with. After this, we have to finish... Cheryl Healing Ray says, my roadblocks have been increasing the last two weeks. She's been edgy, restless, and anxious the last two days. And she has been having panic attacks so bad she can't stop moving, can't sleep, and feels like she's being suffocated, can't even sit down and relax. Okay. So you actually have a pretty good uh, series of explanation about what's going on for you. 
are you able to alliterate out, Cheryl, for yourself, what are the feelings you're feeling and what it is you're needing? My guess is that you have a series of needs that have not been met. My guess is there is three or four things coming. Probably there's some financial stuff that's, that's freaking you out, maybe some relationship stuff that's freaking you out, maybe some health stuff that's freaking you out. And because you haven't um, looked at them on an individual basis, <coughs> potentially because there's a pattern of, of uh, shoving stuff aside. I don't know how to deal with it, so I'm going to shove it aside. You know, um, And so it keeps building, obviously. <coughs> and it's creating stress. It's creating fear. It's creating anxiety. It's creating these conditions because of a lack of direct addressing it. So don't be fearful of addressing it directly. Search the internet for a feeling of, of, of a series of feelings. Search the internet for a list of needs. They're out there, guys, I'm telling you. You don't have to search too hard. Google, list of needs. Google, list of feelings. You find the PDF somewhere. It's pretty easy to locate. And then take each area of your life, Cheryl, that's, that seems to be uh, jumping on top of each other, and work with them one at a time. What am I feeling about this? What am I really needing? And go deeper. You maybe even have to solicit the help of a friend to help you go deeper. But do that with each of them, okay? <clears throat> then forgive yourself for not validating your feelings and needs. Forgive yourself for, for hiding behind it. Forgive yourself for... Um, for going down the road of anxiety, for going down the road of, of fear. Forgive yourself for not allowing yourself to sleep. Forgive yourself for um, putting constant attention on the negatives. Once you identify <coughs> the different things and you forgive yourself for responding in a way that is not honoring of yourself, then you just you stand back. Because you can't stand back until you step away from the game and the game, you're, you're deeply in it right now. Your nose is on the grindstone. So you step back, which is a natural occurrence, by identifying your feelings and needs. <clears throat> and then you go, okay, these are as they currently are. I've identified how it's, how it's feeling right now. I've identified what my needs are. So now I'm going to do a forgiveness practice around creating these kinds of conditions for other people. Do a forgiveness practice to yourself, of course. Do the forgiveness practice for bringing those kinds of conditions for other people. And then as you move forward, because 10 minutes later, you might be driving your car to go to your job. Uh, you're going to move right back into life. But as you move forward, choose positivity. Choose love, peace, and harmony. Choose when your brain starts going, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God, about that one negative thing that you just dropped off back there 10 minutes ago. Don't go down that road. Say, wait a minute. This pattern of focusing on this is not serving me. Love, peace, and harmony, please dissolve this, this thought that keeps reoccurring. And just chant, love, peace, and harmony. I taught you this a long time ago, but we, sometimes we have to come back around and before we, we understand the value of it. In order to derail the constant uh, negativity, we identify it, we love it, we love ourselves, forgive ourselves, and we apply a higher frequency to it. So... It's not, a, it's not something that's going to dissolve overnight. But if you uh, cut off the repeating patterns, you will have, uh, with, with a consciousness, you cut them off by um, recognizing what it is you're feeling and what it is you're needing. You love yourself. You forgive yourself. Bring love, peace, and harmony to the table. Move forward. Keep repeating that. Because every time you repeat that, every time you cut off that old pattern of response, you are creating a better future. Right now, each time you've been responding, it's creating more and more fear, more and more concern, more and more anxiety, because it's not dissolving anything. This is a pattern of dissolving, and as long as you apply conditionally every time, more love, more peace, more harmony, even if you have to do it 100 times a day, you are creating a far better future, which will create a better future tomorrow and next week and so forth. It will require a little bit of constant vigilance, but you can do it. Okay? All right. Okay, so that was the last part. Uh, Steffi, sorry. I, I uh, mentioned a moment ago I have to wrap it up. And so this is section one. 
of self-healing. It starts by the bigger picture awareness, saying that our past impacts our present, and our present impacts our future. Let's deal with everything from the present, from conscious awareness, identifying our feelings and needs, and loving ourself. We then apply forgiveness to the condition, especially to self, and we bring love, peace, and harmony to the table to clear a better future. We're going to go more into different layers of that tomorrow, and we'll use, obviously, a lot of Master Shah's wisdom to, to accomplish that. So I want to thank you all for coming. I hope you enjoy this. I hope you share it. If you're new, please hit the subscribe button for those that are watching on podcast, listening on podcast. You can also subscribe. And I look forward to serving you. We'll see you all again tomorrow. Mahalo, everybody. Bye-bye.